y'all. It's Major Marion Durham from the Salvation Army in Ocala, and today we get to craft together. Uh, we're going to be doing a class called Two Printables, Four Ways. And what I have here in front of me are some cards that I have made using a printable. Now, I hope you've been given that printable this morning. I um, got these printables from the Bright Bible and they do a monthly Bible journaling lesson. And during the pandemic, I have been doing a monthly mailing to the ladies in my core uh, for women's ministries. And this is uh, one of the things that I've done. So you can see here uh, from this lesson from last um, this year, February, 2021, we use the heart printable. I hope you have a couple of copies of that on cardstock. And then I also have this one here uh, with the teacups that says a cup of hope overflowing. I hope you have that. A black and white is totally fine on cardstock. So let me show you the four cards and then we'll work together. So what I've done is used the printable uh, twice in a very simple way uh, that anybody can do. And then I'm going to show you how you can take it up a notch and um, make the cards a little more um, interesting and uh, some techniques with crafts. Paper crafting is my jam. All right, so the first one for the heart card, this is a very simple card. And all I did was color it with my colored pencils. I cut the, uh, the wording out and I added just a little heart and put it with one layer of paper. But if you wanna take it up a notch, this is the card that I'm gonna demonstrate for you today. It uh, has a lot more going on. It has several layers of paper. Uh, I'll show you how to make washi tape flags. Uh, we add washi tape on every single one of those. We chalk uh, the lettering and um, we double matted it and washi tape across the bottom. And then I'm gonna show you how, how to make a fancy paper clip with ribbon. This one is a pom-pom, but we're gonna do a ribbon one together. And you can see here, if you do that, if you put that paper clip on, you can include a cup of tea when you send the card to a friend. For the heart card, uh, this again is very simple. All I did was color the image uh, and I did take a Sharpie and write love across there and I put one mat. But on this card, um, I took it up a couple of levels by adding double matting on both layers here, the background and the printable image that I colored. I took another one of the printable image and I cut it out. I sh I'll show you how to cut a lace edge. And then I made a washi tape um, banner for across the front. All right. So that's what we're going to do today. So I hope you have all your materials together and I look forward to showing you how to do this. All right, so I've got everything laid out, but I wanted to talk about protecting this, your surface uh, while, while you craft. I have a silicone mat that I got um, for only 25 cents at a yard sale. So woohoo! If you don't happen on a deal like that or don't wanna pay full price, let me show you a quick dollar store hack. Um, for a lot of my classes, especially if I'm using paint or something a little bit messy like gesso, I use these plastic folders from the Dollar Tree, just like the ones you get for school. I cut it in half uh, so that it would lay flat and I could use it for two people. You can see how here it's got paint from what I've used before in another class. You can also just use a large sheet of paper. The cards that we are using today are from Michael's, uh, their brand called Recollection, Value Pack, 25 in a pack. It has the card and the matching envelope. I used ivory because that's just what I had on hand. You could certainly use a colored card or a white card if that's what you prefer. Or sometimes I've made and designed cards for crafts with my ladies and I've used Hallmark cards that I have found uh, in our Hallmark closet at the core. Um, like when I did one with these, I just used a large die cut and you couldn't see this. You could just see that as background paper and see it had this cute little polka dotted paper. So 
you have some blank cards, or I've even used cards that had a, a, a holiday or a sentiment on it, and I just covered it up. So that was free. So that's the card that, that we're using. And um, let me show you the printable here. Now, if you're gonna make both cards, obviously you'll need a couple of copies. I just copied it on cardstock, white cardstock, black and white, no color needed. Um, and at first I just did a rough cut around it, like a square, and then I colored it using my colored pencils. Now, I love this brand, Prismacolor Premier, but if you only have you know, your eight pack of <laughs> Crayola, that's fine. Um, but these are wonderful pencils, and um, I have lots of colors to choose from. Um, and I also did a little bit of shading. Uh, you can see here, see how I just made it darker on one edge. I used a couple of colors of green and pink and red and darker here. I'm not a great shade um, artist, but that just gives it a little bit of depth, okay? So the first thing you do after you take your rough cut, I want you can go ahead and color it. I think it's helpful to do that first before you do the cutting uh, that we're going to do. And I wanna show you a technique. Some people call it fussy cutting. We're not doing quite that, but what we're gonna do is just to take our, our scissors. I hope you have some nice, small, uh, sharp scissors. And I'm just gonna take the corner and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna try to keep it fairly even as to how much of a white border that I do. Like I did went a little wide there. Let me go in here, do the lip, go down, go out slightly here. And then when it gets in your way, just bend it out of the way, go down. And now you're gonna turn the card, not your scissors. Makes a cleaner cut that way on your angles. You're gonna come around, move the card, not your scissors. It's hard to get back in there and make a, a, a smooth cut. All right. So you see how here we have basically, it's maybe a little wider right there, um, and to go around. I'm not gonna to try to go in there. That's too much trouble. Um, and I did a fussy cut there. And then I did the same thing for the words. You can see I've already cut those, but let me just show you here. When you're doing the words, I kind of go in a little bit closer and I'm just gonna turn the words, not my scissors. Go up in there, turn the words. And you see how we've got all this cursive here? What we're gonna do is we're gonna mainly go across. We might dip a little here, but we need to make a bigger dip there. So we're gonna turn, and then we'll turn and come back around, okay? Come back around. Now, it would look weird if that was completely straight, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around just to give it a little bit of movement there. All right, all right. Now, to give it a little bit of color, I wanted something um, different than my colored pencils, and so I used chalks. You'll notice on my simple card, I left it at that. And in fact, on this one, because I wasn't adding washi tape, I left hope overflowing as one word. So depending on how complicated you want your cards to look, you can cut all three words or not. Okay, um, so let me show you what I did on this one. I added chalk on the words and you really can use any kind of craft chalk. This is um, right now, what I'm using is a Stamping Up brand, but you know, they make all kinds of chalk. You can. It's usually pretty inexpensive. Um, this set, I think I got secondhand. Um, it came with some applicators, but you know what I like to use because they're disposable? It's just Q-tips. I have that in one of my craft bags. I always have Q-tips. So on this one, I chose to use green at the top so it would lay on top of the blue for contrast. 
and then red on top of the green and blue on top of the pink and red. So let's see. So on this one, I'm going to need to use the pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my Q-tip and choose my pink and red. I'm gonna use this kind of medium pink. And I, and I chose those colors because that's what was in my background. And I'll show you that in a minute. And you just go right on top of it. Nothing, um, just hold it down there. just to give it some color and depth. All right, and you see, I did that on my craft mat and I don't care what it looks like. Um, it's, it doesn't really come off of this silicone. I can get it dirty. It's wonderful. Okay, um, so there you go. And you can make it stronger if you wanna make it a darker color. You, you would use a different color scheme maybe, uh, depending on your background color. So if I was going to only do, here's my basic card. Um, and I had chosen uh, to use uh, some scrapbook paper that I had from a Bible journaling company called Illustrated Faith. The great thing about their paper, as well as a lot of other uh, paper pads, you have lots to choose from. And also the majority of them will have a pattern on one side and either another pattern or a coordinating color. So on this, I chose the pink uh, with the green plaid. And if you wanna keep it super simple, I just uh, cut my paper and I left a border just for contrast. You certainly could just add that if you'd like, but it's great to have the pattern. There is pink on the back side if I wanted to use a coordinating color there. Um, on my fancier card, look what I did here. I used the green and I just used plain green cardstock, nothing fancy. And you see that I took my green and I mounted. I cut it like that. You see how that makes it pop? And the other thing I did is I took this, once I had it colored the way I wanted, I laid it on top of here. I did not measure, I'm not a measurer. To know how much to cut, okay? and then I adhered it. Now let's take a second and talk about adhesive. I like a tape runner. Um, right now I happen to have Elmer's and that's wonderful. A lot of times when I'm affixing large things or like the square background matting paper, I'll use um, what's called a Hermafix, it's on a roll. And what does it roll out? It rolls out adhesive squares, so it's double-sided tape. Uh, you of course could use a glue stick. It does not adhere. Even when you use the craft bond, it, it works for a while, but sometimes I feel like things, projects just don't uh, stick together as well. So today I'm gonna use the Elmer's and you can see you just glides right on there, gives you the great coverage and it sticks really well. And that's all I have to do. I mean, if you wanna get in there and try to do that you can. But I'm just gonna put it in the middle and then I fussy cut around again. Same thing we did before. This time I'm just doing it so I can have the green border, okay? Cut it kind of close right here, but it made it work. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna dip, I'm gonna go around. Go out just a tad, come down to the bottom, flip it around, all right. Okay, all right. So then, you're just gonna assemble. So I'm gonna use my Hermafix here, but you could use your tape runner, you can use your glue stick. It's just my preference. You do the green first, kind of center it. 
If, if you want to know how much, some people do love to measure. God bless you. All right. Can you see there? I don't know if you can see. Oh, so not cool. What is that? See, I can't even tell you how much that is. All right, I put it in the middle. Um, let me show you the, the technique that I use for how to get my mats the right size. You're gonna love this. So I, here I have a 12 by 12 cutter. I also have a smaller cutter that I like to use. It's an old Creative Memories one. Um, but you get a clean cut if you use a a paper trimmer. You can even use the old ones that like we have in the office. Those are great. But if, if I know that I want to, so let's say I needed to cut that and I'm looking at my card. Um, I'm sure the card, the pack themselves tells you all your measurements, but like I said, I'm not that precise. So I know that that's the width of the card, right? You'll have to excuse my nails. I was working in the garden. Um, and I, I need it to, to come in just a, mit, just a little smidge. You know what I do? I just go through, I crease it with my nail. I'm not kidding, that's what I do. I'll crease it with my nail that way. And I crease it with my nail this way. This is the lazy woman's, the lazy genius method. I go across, I can see my tiny little mark. Right here, I'm gonna cut it just cut it a little wider. Cause here's the thing: you can always cut off more, but you can't add it back. So you see my mark. So now I take my trimmer. And I'll go to that mark. And that's when I cut it. And I can trim it up a little more because I did it a little wide. Alright, trim it up. And I just keep trimming until I feel like it's the size I want. If you butt it up to that, it gets it nice and square, okay? And then I'm like, oh, I did a little too more. Oh wait, I gotta turn this way. All right, I can trim off more, okay? But if you're a measurer, you go for it. Happy days to you. All right, so we're gonna continue to assemble. Now, if I wanna leave it at this, at this level, I certainly can, uh, but we've gone ahead and bump, bumped it up. I, do, I did use a, a heart punch here. I uh, hope you can see that with, I use the back side. Remember how there was pink on the other side of my plaid? So I had a coordinating pink color. I used a little heart punch to give me my heart, all right? Or for this one, I wanted a little more color. So I, I keep all my scraps, y'all. All my scraps, whoo, look at this, this is just a mess, but it works. All right, and I used three of them rather than just a single here because um, that's a very simple card, it's fine, but you know, more is more. So here I used washi tape to kind of ground it on the bottom and I've got a stack. Now, there are different widths of washi. This is a wide one, obviously. That's a, a, a smaller, but not super small. Um, there's one a little wider that's more of a standard size, and then these are a little skinny, but these are not the super skinny. I thought that that didn't work for this project to do the super skinny. So here we're gonna add, and all you gotta do is just add it to the bottom. You can always trim off more. All right, it's a little crooked there, but I'm not gonna take the time to trim it because I wanna show you a technique. 
and I don't want to take up too much of your time so you have time to craft. So you see, you've got your washi tape flags. Let me show you how to do that. So take a couple of inches of your washi. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it back on itself. All right, you see that? But not all the way to the end. There's still some sticky being exposed. You're going to take your, your nails or your, just your fingers, or your hand nails, flatten it at the top first so there's no bubbles, all right? And then you're gonna come, so it's flat, double-sided, with a little sticky there at the end, all right? Then you're gonna take your scissors at the corner, you're gonna go up to the middle, up, to the middle and you're gonna meet your, the cut that you did earlier. So they didn't quite meet, so I just need to go in there a little more. All right. And you don't, you just discard that and then you have a washi flag. So when I layer it, I use that part that was sticking up to come through there, all right? So here I added two flags together I added these, and then I also used the other washi. Um, just to give it some more dimension, okay? I added that right on top. And you can make them as wide or as tall. Um, honestly, sometimes they rip really easy, okay? So you see how I stacked it all there. I did a heart, a washi, I layered it up. I wanna show you how to make your, your paper clip. So on this one, I used two colors of ribbon, and here I just used one. Um, colored paper clips look really great. I got this um, donated, came in my thrift store. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Um, so I snagged it for card making and Bible journaling. All right, so today, let me show you how to make the single one. So I'm just gonna take another green one out. The ribbon that I used, I used um, American Crafts ribbon. It came in a pack. Um, it's not too wide, it's not too thin, all right? Now, if you really wanna know how, how wide they are, how long they are, you need at least two and a half inches times two. All right, so five. All right. Miss America, we don't look at centimeters. All right, so five inches. All right, you can always trim it if you think maybe I might mess up, you can go a little further. Cut it at an angle. That's, that one's not cut at an angle. I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so you're gonna loop it. So they're almost touching, not quite. All right, loop. Then you're gonna take your paper clip. You want uh, this part going down. You're gonna take the looped end. You're gonna go through like that. Then you're gonna take your end, that's not the loop, but it's the two edges. You're gonna go up into your loop and you're gonna draw it through and just make a little knot. Pull it nice and tight. Make sure your color's on top if it's not a double-sided ribbon. This is just plain white. See how that one's at an angle, this one is not. Let's angle it. Okay, my scissors aren't quite as sharp as they should be. All right, and you can see how I added it here. I actually put that on top so it would stay. I just glued it down there with my tape runner. Um, uh, but you don't have to, and I was able to include a tea bag that way. I like the ribbon. 
but this one I just had a little yarn pom-pom. All right, I hope you enjoy this and have fun uh, with your colors and your coordinating your paper and your ribbons. And uh, I look forward to showing you our next card. All right, now let's do our heart card. I hope you have your printable on cardstock. And for this one, for the fancier card, you will need two copies. If you only want to do the simple card, you only need the one copy, okay? So on the simple card, all I did was color it in and I matted it on um, a solid colored paper, okay? Um, if that's more your speed and style, go for it. And I did take a wash of Sharpie and did a cursive L-O-V-E there. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, but this is what I'm gonna demonstrate how to make today. Um, I, I really love this polka dotted print with the salmon and the olive, and that was the color scheme that I chose there to match my paper. I, again, use these illustrated faith packs, but today we're gonna use this floral paper with a coordinating pink, just because, frankly, I love this paper so much, I don't have any more of it to show you. So what we're gonna do um, is I took my colors from this uh, paper, this pattern paper, and you see I took, remember how I told you I had multicolored, uh, so I just kind of picked out which greens worked best and so forth, okay? So I colored my image, all right? And then all you need to do then is um, you cut it out. Now, here's one thing that I did do that's probably not quite as obvious at first. When you'll see here, this is a little longer. I did trim it up to make it fit on the card a little better, okay? But that's totally up to you. I did use black, even though there's not really black, except for these tiny polka dots in my pattern, but I just thought the black made it pop, all right? Um, I'm not gonna take the time to cut that out, but you see, you just layer it up, just like we did on our other card. All right, another one for the middle. All right, then you add your pattern. as best you can. All right, now here's uh, where we did things a little bit differently. Um, I did layer it. I put it in the middle, put my colored image. This one's not colored, but you know what I'm saying. Put it there, and that's flat. You see this one is not flat because then, I flipped the paper over so it coordinates. Remember how I told you that it had a pink backside? And then I took the second image. I took it one of the images, right? I traced it, cut it in the solid color. Does that make sense? In the solid color, I did that. But you'll notice on the principle, it has like a lace edge now, if you have some deckle scissors, you can do that, or scalloped. I didn't do that because I want to show you that you don't need those because what you're going to do is you're just going to cut an edge using the same fussy cutting technique. All right, you ready? So you're just going to come in at the bottom at the angle, and you're just going to move it up and down, up and down, up and down. Is it gonna be exactly? No, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Up and down, up and down. And you're gonna do that all the way around. You're creating this pretty border on top of your coordinating heart that goes with your pattern paper. Now, if your pattern paper 
does not have a coordinating color on the back. I'm sure you can find just plain paper to do that. Like you can just do a red heart if you have red in your pattern. Whatever your pattern paper looks like, just find a coordinating color. Even if it's, okay, even if it's not from the actual paper itself. All right, go to a point, all right? And here's where it gets fun. This has dimension because I used um, something called Pop. So a lot of them are Pop Dots is the name brand. But you know, Mama don't have a lot of money. So she ordered some from Oriental Trading. I use the large ones. I love the large ones. I love the large ones, the tiny ones, the round ones, the square ones. They're all awesome. Okay. And that's basically foam adhesive double-sided. So let me show you. We've got this here. I'm gonna take probably four. Let's see, one each at the top. They're sticky on the back side. You just put it right back down. Make sure that they're on there nice and good. And then you take the sticker paper off the other side. Got that? Now, I didn't take the time to use the colored one. Um, so I'm gonna put it on top of here and I'll cut it out. All right, you see how that gives it a lot of dimension. Now I also, that, that's gonna look really pretty on that card. Um, I did that, layered that, and then I made a washi flag. Now there's, there is some black on there, but I also made a pink one to show you what a pink one would look like. Isn't it adorable? Isn't that gonna look cute? All right. And I did that on the top and I just um, trimmed it and I tucked it under. I used, you can use double-sided tape. I think I probably, I think I used a, one of these, just tucked it under. Um, it might be easier to do before you put it down. So let me show you how to make these. All right. Um, for the original card, I did black. And I think this is where it's kind of important to have the same um, width. All right. Now this is the same kind of idea of our other washi flag, except this time we're going to do it on a piece of twine. All right. Um, so you're just going to take, not, you don't need quite as much as you needed for the other. A couple inches. And, all right, you're going to take that, you're going to put it in the middle. You got that? Well, it's kind of in the middle. All right, and you're going to press it right there at the top. Again, do it from the top down. Lay it on top of each other. If you didn't get it quite centered, you can always trim up your edges. All right? And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna come through and you're gonna do a washi flag. This time, you don't need to leave a sticky end. All right? And, and when it's time to do your second one, I did them in this order, like a bright, lighter, bright, lighter. This one's a little bit skinnier, but not much. Trim it. Now, don't leave a lot of room in between because you need it to hang close together. If you leave it too wide, um, it's gonna be too long to fit on your heart. So you need just a tiny bit in between. All right, same thing. Put it in the center. Fold it down. Try to fold it on top of itself as best you can, but if they get a little off, don't fret. All right, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna make it the same length that way. See, I trimmed up my excess, so they're about the same size. Go through, do your first cut, then your second cut. There you go. You'll do all four, okay? 
there you go. That's the second card. I um, hope you guys really like it. Thanks for watching. Have fun. Bye-bye.